Um, if you want to read or see something better, you can also come a few steps in front. I think no one is biting. Um, today I'm going to talk about Captain, and Captain is an application lifecycle orchestrator. Now, the funny thing is that it operates in Kubernetes, and who has ever heard about an application in Kubernetes? Well, most likely no one, because the categories are often like pods, deployments, services, but nothing of it is like defined as an application, rather than from our wording, something which is running inside a pod or inside a container. Now, I'm coming from a very old background, means I did enterprise architecture in my former life, I would say, and we sliced and diced the whole world into like data layers and information and system architecture and network architecture. We had applications, we had services, we had systems. And the very important, uh, very interesting thing in it is that the way how we defined an application or system is everything what was needed for this little deployment itself. I Means not like only the application logic, which is running somewhere, but also the middleware, also the databases. This all together was an application if it got too complex, we defined it often as a system, and this is what we actually look at, but no one nowadays think it this way. It's always like, hey, we deploy our hundreds of pods and hundreds of clusters, and it's getting very complicated, but this end-to-end -end view is a little bit getting lost. So this is what we are taking a look at today, and we learn and try to understand how Captain can, can help us. My name is Max Körbecher, I'm co-founder of Liquid Reply. I'm also CNCF ambassador and uh, have yeah, basically kicked off and now co-chair also the um, CNCF tech for environmental sustainability and a few other things. So uh, happy, if you, happy to chat with you if you would like to know more also about open source and open source technology and what's going on in this ecosystem. So welcome on board for our little journey, for our little tour in this direct direction. Um, and first of all, we need to discuss about what is Captain. Who has heard of Captain before? Wow, no one. <laughs> Perfect, awesome. So you're the good, good, uh, in good company. Um, let's have a look on Captain. Um, the first thing which we need to have a have a clear look at is that um, in Captain we're moving very fast forward, and Captain has already a past. This is Captain V1. And when you take a look closely to the image, you can see like you have tons of tools and they all run through one single bottleneck. Now I'm coming from a cloud native background or working cloud native and open source. And I can tell you this is not very cloud native because it will not scale. At one point this can fail and then you have a big, big problem. So last year the community decided, hey, we need to re-architect, redesign and re-implement our key functionalities of what Captain actually does. And now it feels more natively running into like just somewhere in your cluster. It's just a custom resource definition running alongside all the other standard tools which, do, which you have in your clusters. Prometheus, for example, for metrics, open telemetry, and obviously also all of your applications. And this new tool is also called Captain Lifecycle Toolkit because we don't see it as a big application anymore. It's just there to help you on very specific points, integrating your observability and generating for you more transparency, more insights into your system, into your application and how it's going on when it's getting deployed towards your Kubernetes cluster. So why we did not need, actually, uh, take already my, my next slide away. Why we need a different concept is also that um, we see all this shift left towards pushing more to a developer itself, um, that we increase also the complexity on the upside for some reason. Obviously, if we make platform engineering, we have a whole CI CD system and way, way more of this. I actually don't like to just say like, hey, platform engineering is CI, CD. That's not true. There's so much more around it. Um, but we are shifting away with this complexity. And the cognitive load for developers is increasing on the other hand side, or even so, the cognitive load is um, increasing on the other hand side. Um, 
So what we basically want to, or what we see there is like, <laughs> wherever we are going, it's getting more and more complicated. Also, if you want to use the tool chain and understand how your application is behaving, or to the infrastructure side of the story, we are talking about scaling clusters around the globe in different cloud providers with different configurations. And yes, we are still not out of this, like, this has worked on my machine topic, because this is still excuses, which we see quite often, even though we run, meanwhile, often in containers. And last but not least, there was ton, tons of community feedback that we need a better approach for Captain itself. So how does Captain integrate is, I said, and we're talking about Captain Lifecycle Toolkit, the new version, um, is that it runs alongside everything else what you have typically in your cluster. Normally, you maybe have nowadays an open telemetry implemented, you have a Prometheus, you have a metric server, um, maybe you have a GitOps tool like Flux or Argo CD somewhere, and so on and so forth. And what Captain gives us is to see every deployment which we are doing towards a cluster like a whole story for itself and adding up a pre-task uh, to check on the configuration, whatever you want to have there, and a post-deployment, and also measures the time in between. How long did I did my application need from the time where it's getting deployed until the time where it's 100% running and can handle load? because this is actually quite interesting. And you see here on the violet bar in the top that there is written DORA matrix. Anyone ever heard of DORA matrix? Oh, there are the SREs coming out slowly. Perfect. So DORA and not DORI, but similar, um, is the DevOps Research and Assessment uh, LLC. It was actually a company, a research institute, which got bought by Google. But what these guys were doing very, very well is to identify for the IT sector, what are the very relevant metrics for an IT department to measure and to understand how good, how fast we are in our deployments and yeah, well, how effective we are in the end for this. And DORA is actually not that complicated because it has just four metrics, which we take a look at. The first one is the deployment frequency. And this is something which is like ghosting around since a while in the cloud native universe. Talking in conference, oh, how many deployments do you do per day? 10, 20, 100? Well, the reality is that still most companies do maybe one or two in a month, maybe in a quarter, maybe in half a year. This is not bad. That has nothing to do do with being bad, but um, this is more like the reality and just very high performing teams, which are digital native as a Spotify to the Netflix and so on, they can do this high uh, demand, high delivery of applications. Then also very interesting is the lead time for the changes. So how long do I take from the first commit of a change to my Git repository until it hit production? Anyone idea for your system how long it takes? Is it like a week, a couple of days, uh, one day, a few hours? So overall, it was always like a couple of days from the commit until it reached production. In Adora metrics, this would mean that you're actually quite slow, but it's still okay because it's not telling that good or bad. And the next one is the change failure rate. How often do you cause, or how often failure happens when you cause changes? The less failure happens, and the more often you do changes, the better, the more efficient you are in your deployments. And the better is maybe your team. And then last but not least, um, the time to restore services. When something is really, really heavily failing, how long do you need to restore it? Working for large enterprises are very often here like, oh, you have less than an hour. Get me the things up and running in less than an hour. If a whole system landscape fails, it doesn't matter what we do. One hour is already very, very spotty. And until I have called everyone who has needed for it, because sometimes automation in big enterprises needs some manual improvements, we will never do one hour. Nevertheless, um, there's a quite nice metrics um, from, from some other folks who have taken a deeper look into it and have moved on with the research on the Stora metrics. 
and they define for all these four metrics like a different categories from very low to elite or very fast and speedy companies. How I would like to define it is like from a very regulated environment, some companies who needs to fulfill very strict, very high regulations towards digital native companies. Companies who were born in the IT world, who are running only IT products and do not know anything else than just computer servers and business processes. We see very, very less moving up these words at the moment. But this is something where, for example, Captain can come in and gives you first the transparency about it, so you know your Dora matrix. And then in the next step, you can work on getting better in this uh, metrics, metrics. So Captain provides you actually three key aspects which we can work with. The first one is the observability data. What do I mean with this? Well, even so, we have a couple of de facto standards already around the cloud native uh, environments. Um, it's still sometimes very, very hard to combine commercial tools talking with all those super fancy self-written scalers. And even so, if it's just like open source projects, which are like Kida, for example, which is very popular and very, very big user base, all of them need their custom little plugins to be able to communicate with all of the other um, observability providers. So the more you will get into your landscape, the more complicated is actually the setup just of these things. And Captain, well, it's just unifying this in the one another way. It can communicate with all kinds of observability tools, but it doesn't do anything more fancy than just utilize open telemetry or the Prometheus agent and the metric server of Kubernetes. And on the other hand, it can integrate with all the cool new cloud native uh, tools as a Kida, um, as Argo CD for GitOps and so on and so forth. The next ap uh, aspect is to check on deployments. This is done in the Dino language, or in the end, just JavaScript, but hey, let's put an animal in front of it. And what we can do with this is do pre-deployment checks. Um, let's say I would like to know if the nodes have, for example, enough CPUs, and I can do a post-deployment check. Is there still enough CPU available? Why do I need to do this? Well, obviously, on the one hand side, my application itself eats some CPU. But if you have a very high dynamic cluster where you have multiple parts moving all the time, and then you have different other schedulers running around, maybe trying to optimize the cluster to reduce the size itself, to get rid of over provision systems and so on and so forth, it can be very valid to understand also after um, the deployment was done, if there are still C enough CPU available or not. Just to set limits and requests is not enough. It just provides you for the snap and time, like, hey, at the moment I have enough. But if you start staffing other applications to it, well, it might work. Most of the time, some stuff maybe will not be deployed anymore. But um, if you have those pre-checks, we can find out before we try to deploy anything. Means we can trigger, for example, the cluster scaling beforehand and the deployment is not going to fail. Because typically what most systems are not aware of is if a deployment fails, it's most of the time a fire for and forget. And obviously, um, yeah, you can validate your SLOs, which is the most boring part actually in it, but very helpful if you're moving on in the SAE environments. And last but not least, the last aspect which we get is to observe any of the deployments. As said, and as I have tried to introduce it, with Captain, you can define applications. So which pods belongs to each other, either if they're in the same namespace, but maybe also in different namespaces. Maybe which database or other middleware is also part of this application. So that I can chain up all those moving components and do for all of the single components pre and post checks to identify how good I am in the end of the whole application deployment itself. This might sound quite complicated. You don't have to do it, obviously, for everything. However, if you really have a complex part, a complex deployment, it might help you to understand at which point in time it maybe gets very slow when you deploy something of your application. 
Obviously, you can troubleshoot with it. You get your whole standard stack. You get your Grafana. You get your traces. You get your Prometheus. All this good stuff. Um, you can also additionally deploy your log forwarder if you need some more logs. Um, I said this is not like it's a big additional tool. It just sits in the little planks which are there, which you maybe even do not recognize that they are there, but it fills it out for the people who are interested in it. So. We're going to have a short look on a deployment, on a demo, which you also can follow along, can deploy it by yourself. Um, quite nice and handy to do so. And have a look for three things. The first thing are annotations. Um, we will see this. Uh, I hope you can read it. Otherwise, we have a classic structure for annotations itself. And then we have there captain.sh backslash workload. And then, for example, the name for it. We have also a version, pre-tasks pre-evaluation and post tasks and post evaluations. I will tell you in a while a little bit more about it. These tasks and evaluations are living in a different file, in a different deployment, right? So it's a own, own additional uh, manifest file, which you have to throw on top of Kubernetes or wherever else you would like to have to live it. And what we can do is, for example, um, and this is a notification task, which sends me a hook or which sends me a message through a hook to my Slack. So I see what's going on. And the right one is an evaluation task, which is checking the CPU capacity um, and is looking for everything what has more than four CPU available. And last but not least, we have the application awareness asset. We can cluster within Captain uh, applications or pods, better to say, which belongs to one application logically together and chain them practically up so that I'm always aware on which part of the deployment are getting maybe a problem or not. So um, I have a very boring machine running here. It's Ubuntu server, uh, not so very much interesting. Uh, there's running microcades on top of it and um, we have their little stack running. Uh, I think I shortly need the password. Otherwise there's, um, whoa, yeah. Um, we have our typical stuff in the uh, cube system. Um, we have a cert manager running. This comes or is required a little bit from captain for the communication and ensure that everything um, is handled probably right because captain integrates very well natively to the cube API, but also to um, like that scraping the, the data from the open telemetry and send this also forward to any kind of um, observability tool, either it's open source or uh, even commercial. Um, you can see here in this part, uh, we have the Prometheus running, we have the uh, node exporter running, some Grafana running, um, nothing, nothing super duper special. And the deployment down here is in very classic Argo CD. Also nothing which we have fine-tuned or manipulated that much. It's just like a little config itself and that's it. So this is absolutely not production ready. Do not copy paste it if you find the Git repository, but it's okay to test it out. Um, and then there's a very interesting part, which is also a little bit wrapped around the whole um, lifecycle toolkit. You have a couple of operators running within the Captain lifecycle toolkit namespace. And last but not least, we have down here um, the simple node application. And you can see that two of these are actually jobs because they're completed and do not run anything anymore. Um, and these are the pre and post notification tasks. What we have on the cluster running, we can also observe directly in the Argo CD and well, I don't need to repeat it. I basically read you everything what's happening. What is, however, interesting is this deployment here for the simple node. Um, this is a standard deployment. Um, and what does it trigger? Obviously, is um, the replica set. And then in the lower backup part, we see that, okay, here's the pre-notification, the post-notification going on, but also the evaluations for the CPU, for example. And only if these checks are all healthy and good to go, only then the application is either deployed, otherwise I get a notification and need to um, 
do and, and do something out of this. Um, in the end, it just like throws this application on top of it, publishes it, um, build version number three, and yeah, from the captain team um, who was mainly uh, working on this. Now you will tell me, okay, that's not very much interesting. I can do this all day long at home. That's right. Um, so what we can also see is the pre-default configured uh, Grafana dashboard. And um, it grabs here the captain application for the simple node. And you see that, okay, I failed two times at deployment. Oopsie. One time it was successful. Currently, there's no active deployments going on. Okay. And the average time between the deployments is one minute and 33 seconds, which is okay. It's just a standard little web application. Um, it could be even more worse if we take a look on the deployment time on the right side. Um, and uh, the time between deployments, the worst one was one minute and 50 seconds. So what we can do is very simple. We just upgrade to the next version. And somewhere else I need to add also the right version there. I'm going first to deploy this because otherwise we need to wait too long. And get push original main. Okay. Um, you all maybe will have seen this already in the past. We need to refresh here a little bit. Then this is out of, out of sync and um, Argo CD starts to synchronize because of the new version, pulls the image, going to deploy it. Um, what happens here in the, uh, in the end is like, okay, I try actually to deploy this pod, but I first need to run all my pre-evaluation and post-evaluation. And this is also quite interesting because um, you see here, I get in my Slack directly a notification about it, that something is going on, right? You see already there's a new version 4.0.2, before it was 3.0.2, and now it's going to run all the checks. So far they were all happy and successful. I hope I didn't miss it here already. Now we have already two successful deployments. All right, cool. That's it. <laughs> Thank you for being here. So, no, um, just kidding. But um, you see, it's super easy. And this is the very cool feature of Captain. It's just like integrated on very two narrow, small, interesting spots and give me all the metrics around it. It doesn't make anything more complicated. And from there on, I can start optimizing my deployment, right? Because I have my overview, for example, here um, in, the, in the Argo CD. Um, I can go over to Jaeger. Uh, find my traces, um, nail this down, and I can even more up, um, check out, for example, the lifecycle toolkit metrics. For the lifecycle toolkit, in this, everything is flat. It was not even hard for this tool to just check on the on the um, on the evaluation or execute the task itself. It's it's barely recognized, so it's quite scalable. That's very horrible to read, but we'll try to get through it. Um, otherwise, you can also find later the link to the repository and take a look by yourself. Um, as I said, very, very boring part here is it's a, it's a deployment for the application. And here we have, for example, the annotations, which I also have shown and notified or yeah, explained earlier. Other than that, it's just a, a service um, deploying this website. We could also double check how it's going on here. It changed the color, it's built version four, yay. And where actually the magic happens is in these captain, uh, captain parts. The first one, which is quite interesting, is um, the captain metric, because what you need to specify is which metrics captain should be aware of and look at. So instead of have thousands of predefined Prometheus metrics, you just tell like, oh, I would like to grab the CPU from the nodes, or I would like to, I don't know, see the megabytes per seconds going through the network interface, whatsoever, right? So you just pick exactly what you really need. And in this case, um, we have a provider 
Prometheus and just do a query on the uh, um, node status capacity for the CPU and get any kind of value back. Um, in this case, most likely the value will be something between four and one. If it would be lower than one, then the deployment would not happen. Um, because of this evaluation which we have here. Um, this evaluation is very simple done. It's for the specific namespace where the application is running in. And then what it does here is to use the captain metrics as a reference, which we have seen just before, for the available CPUs, and tell that my uh, evalu evaluation target is bigger than one. If I would write now here bigger than four, the deployment would not happen because the node has just four CPU in which micro K is running. There's already some utilization going on, so it has definitely less than four. And with that, the deployment itself would be able would not be able to, to run and I would get a notification for it or I can trigger a notification for it, whatever else I want to do out of this information. Beside that, um, this is just a task file for uh, written in Deno. Um, also, again, nothing special. I hand over a token for my Slack, and whenever some deployment's going on, I get a notification um, out of this. So you can also see here, for example, in Slack, I have now two notifications, and um, yeah, inform me that the deployment was practically successful. For sure, you can write here more things, uh, whatever else you would like to write. Um, you can also do some links or whatsoever. You, you do not have any limitations. It's JavaScript. Whatever you want to throw in, you can throw in, and then you can do a, um, yeah, get all kind of feedback on it. All right. Um, so if you would like to try it by yourself, there's a very, very cool uh, little demo um, which you can find on the Captain Sandbox or through scanning this QR code. There's also directly in the Captain repository another very helpful demo uh, called the Potato Head uh, thingy. You maybe have seen it from the uh, CNCF tech application delivery. It's a kind of potato with moving arm and heads which are representing microservices and so on and so forth. Kind of funny, if you ever do kids days or something like this, it's a good, good thing to start with. So um, let's have a little bit, again, a look on this end-to-end -end integration. It looks very, very complicated what is shown by the, by the integration of Captain. But in the end, the custom resource definitions and the operator, whatever else they, they deploy here from the lifecycle toolkit, um, they do not try to overcomplicate it itself. So whenever you want to define checks, you can do this all in a file, and you can very precisely tell for which namespace, for which application you would like to run which check or which task. And it can integrate before the deployment happens, during the deployment, and after the deployment. So you get your Dora metrics out of it, and based on this, you can start acting um, improve the performance of the deployment itself, and so on. The other thing is, which we, well, obviously it integrates with Grafana, but you can integrate it with any other observability tool which you like to have. Um, if it's Datadog or Dynatrace or whatsoever, um, you don't need to run it in Grafana, you can put it there, just configure your uh, dashboards, because the metrics which it is using are not very specific or special. It's just bundle it together and put you basically the red line in between all of these metrics which you have already available. So um, in the end, Captain comes therefore with a couple of use cases where it is very good at. There are some use cases where it is not good at, but these following use cases, it's very, very strong with. The first thing is um, leverage the existing observability. Already have repeated it a couple of times. But rather than you need a plug and play system for every different tools which you're using, and this can be, from our experience, get very, very complicated if you have a large scale multi tenancy cluster and everyone wants to use different scalars and whatsoever. With a layer of captain in between, we do not need to introduce too many plugins where we lost maybe some kind of control of. 
The other thing is that um, to define this kind of progressive delivery in combination with any kind of GitOps tools um, never felt so easy. Like if you have used something else, um, it often is getting very intransparent what's actually going on. And because of the whole stack, the Captain Lifecycle Toolkit delivers to you, you can easily find out what is actually going on, why it is acting like this. You can define reactions on the metrics which you got and trigger, for example, different behavior or trigger, for example, that the system is automatically already reacting to um, any kind of circumstances. And then for sure, one single task sending you a Slack notification is not enough. Um, and also just to, to do a single check on CPUs is maybe not enough. Um, if you have a bigger system, these files are very, very long. And this is the, well, SIE slash DevOps, whatever knowledge about a application and a system put into a file and define for or take away for you the, the work of checking all the single steps before you do anything and hand it over to a system. So it's like, well, leveraging a little bit your knowledge and put it really into a system, not having it written down in any kind of shell scripts, which often running in any kind of CI CD systems and do some checks and whatsoever. No, this is cloud native. It runs alongside your application. It knows immediately what's wrong and can immediately act on it. And well, um, yes, I'm annoying with it, but app aware delivery is a thing because we lost this perspective of like, uh, there is something which belongs together and just together it is a functioning system. We're talking nowadays so much about the microservices and then everything is stateless and can scale up and down, left, right, shifted around the globe, um, looking into sustainability, shifting it to different locations whatsoever. But at some point we lost this track of like, well, it still somehow belongs together. It doesn't help me if my database is running somewhere in, in Finland and my application is running in Spain and my latency is so big that my connections continuously drops. So bringing this perspective of the application awareness back into the game, because it was in the past there, it's got a little bit lost, now it's, we try to bring it back, um, can really help teams to understand the complexity of the systems which they meanwhile have running, right? And there's actually some kind of funny uh, discussions going on in this way because bigger customers or bigger users identify certainly that they do not have a microservice world and not microservice applications, but it's back a monolith because it actually all belongs, to, belongs together. Some parts of it can fail for sure, but overall it belongs together and I've just created a very new monolithic application. So, um, one of the last things uh, to Captain or to Captain Lifecycle Toolkit. Well, um, to be fair, I skipped the Captain V1 part because showing you two tools in one thing is a little bit too much. Um, you can experience it by yourself. But there is a very easy guide to find the one or the other tool. You can see that um, Captain is in a yeah, healthy state. It has a long, uh, long-term service support, and we will keep maintaining it. Um, and Captain itself, the old-school version, makes sense if your stack is a little bit more. Well, I do not want to say legacy, but yeah, kind of old-school, kind of classic. Something which you meanwhile should have. Um, it helps you to integrate quality gates which are fantastic, which are all, uh, uh, very, very cool. It's something which we also do in the Kubernetes release team. You maybe have seen this once, like it's a very big green, red, violet table with boxes in it and shows you where quality gates and, and checks fails. Um, or where it's also very helpful is if you need a custom DevOps tool, um, which is an extent to your existing CI CD system. Maybe Jenkins is not enough anymore. You need a little bit more than GitLab. However, in the brave new world, it looks like that with the Captain Lifecycle Toolkit, we focus more on the automated part of observability. I said, you need to deploy it, 
but it's not immersive. It doesn't change your system itself. Um, if you are interested in your application awareness, it's also the right one. And um, if you want to have any kind of yeah policy enforcements, because you can also interact here with policies if you have to. And last but not least, um, yeah, have those health checks, um, which are based on observability and metrics, and not just like some probes. And uh, they're good, they're fine. Um, but you know, sometimes the world is a little bit more complicated than puzzled somehow together who is demanding which kind of resources. So thank you very much. And I hope you have maybe some questions. <laughs> Are there any questions? Please. There are no ones. It's no stupid. OPA, Open Policy Agent. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. So, with OPA, I actually not 100% sure, but with Cuverno, yes, because Cuverno is. Um, so the question of all, sorry, I need to repeat this for the people who are online. Um, if you can integrate this tool with Cuverno or OPA. So yes, you can integrate it, especially with Cuverno, um, because Cuverno in the end do not care about your resource type. So as long as your resource type exists in the cluster, and it doesn't matter if then it's a custom resource definition, it can act on it. And this is actually the kind of superpower for Cuverno. Um, that it's able to understand like, oh, there is now a captain application and then whatever else is written in your uh, Cuverno policy, whether it is just like checking something in addition, which most likely will not make so much sense. But if you want to generate something or mutate something, okay, cool, checks. Yeah, this can, can be done. Doesn't sound like. Also a long day. Time for uh, enjoying the pubs in London. Thank you very much. Have a great day.